Thanks very much. Uh, I'm assuming everyone can hear me just fine. Coming through loud and clear. Yay. Yay. Okay, so uh, hopefully this will be an opportunity for us to um, take a lot of what we've been learning and what we've been hearing and uh, uh, apply it, if you will, into a, a real-world solution. Uh, in my opinion, and I believe in the opinion of many who have spoken and who have organized this, this is the, U the UX design challenge of our time. Um, we've heard earlier this morning that there are many obstacles to truly measuring sustainability. And uh, as opposed to seeing this as just an obstacle, I would like to lay this out in this conference and say, this is the type of challenge and opportunity that we should be taking very, very personally for ourselves and, and for our kids. Um, so let me start off very quickly with how I got into this. Uh, I'm going to switch over my browser here to an idea that I had about four years ago. It was an app. Uh, it didn't start off, obviously, as a, as a, as a portion of an, an iWatch uh, application. But in the development of this concept, I thought, oh, this is so easy. There are so many carbon calculators out here. It, this is going to be a really simple process. The more I looked into it, and, and, and I'll tell you right now, I learn more quickly through experience. And in this case, I have failed uh, a lot in trying to wrap the, my brain around this opportunity and challenge. The first thing I ran into is this idea that we've been talking about this morning, which is carbon emissions and carbon calculators are a great place to start, but it's not the whole picture. Uh, so let me throw out some ideas here that will help us in our brainstorm this morning. So the, the core challenge in this brainstorm that hopefully will lead to solutions and more applications that, that, that are closer to a true measurement of what my impact is today, the core question being, can you tell me what the impact of my choices will be today? And we want to be able to start this process off. There are already some carbon calculation apps out on Google Play and at the App Store, but they all, they all don't answer that key question of a holistic measurement that is qualitative and quantitative and allows you to be able to know without a doubt that your impact is something that you're, you can closely manage. So I'll skip over here to the next slide. So what are the things that we need to consider in the process of designing solutions that makes sense for, for, for consumers, especially, who may not be as into the idea of sustainability as we are. We have to look at the carbon impact, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but think about that term, and think about consumers and how they may react to this word carbon. Um, very esoteric, we understand that because we talk about it on a daily basis, but can a consumer really wrap their brain around it? Not only that, but we also need to take into consideration something called land impact, or from a consumer standpoint, food impact. What you eat, where it comes from, uh, how much water it took for a particular, let's say for example, if you're not a vegetarian, how, how, much, how, much food and, how much water and grain did it take to bring that to table? As well, if it's not local, what were the travel expenses to be able to bring that to the table at the restaurant or at the market? And of course, water impact. Um, I'm going to provide some uh, links here uh, in my channel that helps you understand uh, what we mean by water impact and uh, what we mean by blue, green, and gray as well. So moving on to my next slide very quickly here. Um, I'm not going to read over this, but the, 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 the fundamental uh, uh, concept here is essentially that um, the more urbanized we have become, the more disconnected we have begun we have become from those very things that we consume now this is an obvious to many of us who are at this conference but it's an important point or an important concept that we I believe we need to continue to socialize uh, by the way my slides will be available as well on the channel so I'm going to go through here quickly uh, so let's start start a little bit with what's out there in the market right now Mint.com, a great place where one can uh, quantify, financially quantify uh, their, their expenditures, their investments, uh, their savings. Fitbit, also for health. 
Rise, uh, My Fitness Pal. There are so many offerings right now that are taking this big data concept and essentially they're they're taking it down to a an individual level to where you can take a look at all of these aspects of your personal spending or your personal activities and they're using big data to be able to switch on recommendations that are localized and that connect you uh, with other users. Uh, Fitbit is especially powerful and health, other health applications are especially powerful with connecting you to other users. So why, why am I bringing this up? Because this is the kind of analog that we need for sustainability that simply does not exist right now. So uh, let's take a look a little bit about what Mint does. Very, very top level uh, look at uh, what Mint does. It tracks all of my financial activities. It aggregates my financial inputs and outputs into one simple metric. It visualizes my financial choices. I receive contextual recommendations. And it's one destination database. Once you're done with the application, or you're done with your, the, your iPad view, you're able to go onto the web and get a deeper view, do some deeper data mining. So the challenge I bring to the group today is if Mint can do it for, financial, uh, for the financial realm, if FitnessPal and Fitbit can do it for the health realm, what, are, what, are, what is stopping us from being able to create the same analogs for sustainability in a way that's uh, accessible and, uh, and and usable for the consumer. So just some quick here. I can't get the big picture. Uh, what, sure, I might be able to see my carbon impact, but what is my overall impact? How can I truly measure my, my own level of sustainability? So uh, these are essentially just a repetition. Uh, many, many of them are limited in scope. There's a steep learning curve for, me, for general consumers. Um, we've talked a little bit about life cycle analysis earlier, and uh, I'll get into that here. And I'll spend the last minute on that. But what companies are doing today is uh, they're, they're, they're asking themselves from cradle to grave, what is the true cost of my product? And uh, uh, many companies are not uh, conducting these, type of, these types of life cycle analysis. There's a trend towards doing so, but I, I believe that if if companies are not doing this, perhaps we need to step in and build the right types of applications that allow consumers to be able to put the pieces together. Um, so down here onto the next. So let's step back a little bit here um, and take a look at whether or not we have a market. I'm, I'll pr be providing this link as well in the channel, but there is a, a great article on cultivating the green consumer. And this last paragraph is the one that I really want you to focus on. It's interesting because uh, even even Steve Howard, the CEO of the Climate Group, was uh, very, very, uh, he's very, he's very to the point in basically stating that you know what does it mean when a bag of, to say a bag of chips contains 75 grams of carbon? So uh, we need to be able to move beyond using language that is esoteric to the consumer and make it friendlier, uh, friendlier to the user. So. I've got uh, five minutes here. I want to introduce you to some uh, other links that I think are worth visiting. Gracelinks.org is a nonprofit organization. They've been looking at food and water and energy and creating uh, one way to be able to uh, define sustainability for, for, uh, for the consumer. Another one is Water Footprint, and I'll also be providing this link, uh, Carbon Land and Water Footprint. And, it, and this is a European, a Eurocentric paper, but it's also very, very interesting in regards to, uh, in regards to taking all three carbon, land, and water, and combining these concepts into one consumer-centric or consumer-focused approach. I would also uh, encourage you to take a look at COP21. This is the paper that was uh, that was uh, that came out of the conference in Paris. It's a bit hard to read, but I think it's worth taking a look at as well. Uh, um, ActiveSustainability.com is another great link to, to, uh, to take a look at as we brainstorm today. Uh, the Global Footprint Net Network is another one, and again, I'll be providing all of these links. And then there are a couple of papers that I think are also uh, very, very, very interesting in regards to carbon calculations, how carbon cal calculations are done, whether or not carbon calculations underestimate or overestimate our usage, and how they might be combined with uh, with other with other methods as well. So all of this will be provided 
Um, and I hope to I hope you join me at the uh, at the oh take a look at this this is a bit psychedelic I'm going to stop sharing my screen. There we are. And uh, that's pretty much it for me. Hopefully you you uh, you can join us here at the Slack channel. And uh, yeah, and hopefully hopefully see you there. I'll pass it back to James and the Jim.